Good evening. I feel really fortunate I get to serve with these rock stars. And I also feel really fortunate because I get to work with some of these rock stars. Lewis, Karen, Bruce have all been there to help guide the, the state's green jobs task force work that uh, Senator Anderson and I are, are co-chairing. And it's based around, for me, a basic principle. I'm tired of the uh, philosophy of scarcity. And I'm hungry for that philosophy of prosperity again. I'm tired of the... Of, it's, it's good. We need prosperity in Minnesota. But I am tired of the waste in our society. I want abundance and a living abundance. You know, right now, today, even out of this building, our money and our energy is going out the windows and up our, up our stacks. That is a wasted opportunity. But we also have people in Minnesota, we have talent that's wasted when kids show up for kindergarten not ready to learn because they don't have their basic needs met at home. And we also are wasting in an innovation economy when Minnesota has to compete in a 21st century economy and we have students graduating from high school without the skills to compete. And I'll tell you, I'm a pretty business-oriented guy. I want, I want business to succeed in Minnesota because I think the best social program is a job. And if we don't have healthy businesses, we don't also have healthy communities and vice versa. Johnson Controls is a company that goes into our schools and uh, city halls and, and they're energy experts. There are a few folks that do this. And Johnson Controls, because of the high price of energy and frankly because of the energy conservation bill that I authored two years ago, needed to hire 175 new system techs, pipe fitters, and energy engineers for their Minneapolis construction office alone. They had to get eight of those positions filled from India on H-1 visas, and 167 positions were left vacant because they couldn't find a skilled workforce. They had kids, and I say this as a recent kid myself, they had kids, 22 years old, with two years of school and two years of experience making nearly $100,000 as a system technician this year, in 2008, because they were working so much overtime. They finally left the season with still 111 vacancies. Now what's their solution? Their Career Connect program is connecting with Dunwoody, Dunwoody Academy. Um, where's the gentleman from Dunwoody Academy Charter right School? There you are. The, the Dunwoody Academy is now working with Johnson Controls directly to train system technicians. But I want to tell you what we're focused on over the next few weeks here in Minnesota and what we need your help pushing for. We heard about the, the homes that need to be weatherized and renovated. And our public schools, our, public, our, our buildings are falling apart and they're totally inefficient in terms of energy. Hundreds, if not thousands of them around the state. That's not a productive society. That's a, a philosophy of waste, not abundance. So we need to get into those buildings and tighten them, up, tighten them up. We will have hundreds of millions of dollars, hopefully, of federal weatherization dollars coming to Minnesota within months. But we only have 60 home energy, home energy auditors able to do the work. We need hundreds more. It's a two-week training program. So how are we gonna get those, those spots filled? We're gonna work with the OICs. We're gonna work with the Dislocated Workers Program. We're gonna work in Minneapolis and St. Paul, we're gonna work in Duluth and all over the state, and we're gonna train folks as home energy auditors and put hundreds of folks back to work. Somebody said, I want, I want to put young people to work now, well, so do I. And we're gonna do it in the next few weeks and in the next couple of months, we're gonna put people to work in Minnesota doing the right thing. But we know that it's not just about a few weeks in the classroom. Architects and engineers have a 30% unemployment rate. And there are some folks, some firms keeping folks on just for a few weeks, hoping that things will turn around because they don't want to dare train someone new when things come back. These guys are energy smart. We need to fill in the gaps in their training and put them to work recommissioning and renovating and doing the engineering on our buildings. We got carpenters on the bench, we got electricians on the bench waiting to go back to work with their lunch pails full and ready to, uh, to get to work doing the right thing in Minnesota. That's what we're really focused on. That's the win-win-win solution that Hire is talking about in the Green Jobs Task Force. So I urge you to contact your legislator, like we've 
you've been hearing over and over and over, but as Sai said, Sai's a rock star because he knows how to organize. You need to talk to folks and your friends from elsewhere in Minnesota and get them to call their legislator and tell them that the green job solution is a way out of the doldrums and out of the budget crunch that we have. We're gonna put Minnesotans to work and we're gonna do it right and we're gonna make sure that we all do better when we all do better. And lastly, I think we're talking April 22nd, right? I wanna see 20,000 people outside my window. I look out on the Capitol lawn. I wanna see 20,000 of you guys in green shirts and green hard hats pounding on the, on the walls of the Capitol saying enact the Green Jobs Act now in Minnesota. On April 22nd on Earth Day, Will, what better way is there to honor Earth Day this year than to call for enactment of the Green Jobs Agenda? Thanks all, and I'm really excited to get to work with all of you.